Hi everyone, this is Amy from the Helms Academy and today we're doing a geometry lesson on the volume of 3D figures. So to get started, I want to start by talking about dimensions. So in this case, we're talking about three dimensional figures. Now a one dimensional figure you can see is a line. Two dimensional figures though, we might have a length and width to them, like a square, a triangle, or a circle. And three dimensional figures, we add that third dimension in to give it a depth. So here you can see that it's not just a square, but a cube that has a length, a width, and a height to it, or a cylinder in the same way. For volume, I like to think about volume the same way I think about filling a glass of water. How much water can you get into that glass? So volume is the amount of three-dimensional space that something takes up. Now for today, it's so important that we think about our formula sheets. So on this page, you can see a section of the formula sheet from the high set on the, the left side and a section from the GED formula sheet on the right side. Now with that, you want to look at these formula sheets ahead of time. So if you are planning to take the math GED or high set tests, I would encourage you to really spend time looking over what's on this formula sheet and practicing using it. This formula sheet can save you tons of time and stress on the test because it gives you a lot of good information. But if you don't know how to use the tool, it's not going to be helpful to you on that test. So we're gonna take a look at two sections today and some bonus content a little bit later. But focus the focus here is to look at the volume sections. So you'll see the volume on the high set, they give you a prism, cylinder, pyramid, cone, and sphere. And these are more simplified. So they apply to more things. The GED sheet has broken it down into some more, um, kind of a broader sense of the information. So they break it down into a rectangular prism, a right prism, a cylinder, a pyramid, cone, and sphere, just to give you um, an accurate view of all of those. Both of them have the same essential information. You will have what you need to solve the problems. They just list it in slightly different ways. So depending on which test you're taking, you'll want to get familiar with the sheet that you're working with. For today, we're going to be using the simpler high set sheet for the sake of our lesson and to get an idea of what it means to find the volume of 3D figures. So we're going to start today with a rectangular prism as our first example. So here I know it's a rectangular prism because the sides are rectangles and particularly I want to look at the base and the base is a rectangle here. So this rectangular prism, it says that I need to figure out the volume by multiplying the area of the base by the height. Well, I know how to get the area of the base. The base is a rectangle. And I know rectangles are one of the easiest ones to solve because I just multiply the length times the width. So length times width here is 10 times seven. And if I put those together, I get 70 inches squared. Now to find the volume, I just have to take that 70 and multiply it by our last remaining piece, which is the height. And the height here, as you can see on that left side, is three inches. The box is three inches tall. So when I multiply that together, 70 times three, means that I get a volume of 210 inches cubed. Now you might be wondering, why don't we have inches squared for the area and inches cubed for the volume? Well, remember, we have two dimensions when we talk about area. It's just the rectangle on the bottom. But when we add in that third dimension to talk about volume, we're going to say inches cubed instead of square. So we're taking it from that two-dimensional figure to a three-dimensional figure. For a cylinder, we're going to use the same formula here, that area of the base times the height, but we'll need to figure out a different base. For a cylinder, the base is a circle. So we have to figure out the area of the circle first. Now it says the area equals pi times radius squared. So you'll see that I put on there pi, which your formula sheet will remind you is just 3.14 for the sake of this test. And we're gonna multiply that by the radius. And you'll see on there that I have 3.5. Now you may notice that 3.5 isn't anywhere on the cylinder that we see here on the screen. So how did I get that? Well, we see seven yards down there at the bottom and that's the diameter. It's the distance across the circle but a radius is half of the diameter. So I just did some quick mental math. I said half of seven is 3.5. So 3.5 will be the radius. And I squared that in order to finish my formula. 
So when I do 3.5 squared and multiply that by 3.14, the ultimate answer is 38.465 yards squared. Now that's just my area of my base. So now I need to plug that in to get my volume. So for the volume, you'll see the area of the base times the height. So again, 38.465 times 10, which is the height, how tall the cylinder is, is 384.65 yards cubed. So again, remember, we're going to put that three there for the three dimensional figure in volume. For a pyramid, we need to use the pyramid or cone version. So a pyramid could be a square base or a triangle base or another figure and a cone would have a circle base. So here we know we have a pyramid because we see that triangular base on the bottom. Now, once again, we need to know the area of the base in order to get our volume. So we're gonna have to find the area of our triangle. This one has a few more steps to it. So to find the area of the base, which is a triangle, we're gonna do half times the base times the height. Now, focus only on that triangle on the bottom. We don't wanna look at any of the other dimensions. So we're going to see there, if we just look at that triangle as if it were on paper, that the base of that triangle, which is where we're going to see that line coming up from across the middle there, that's 13 feet. And with this one, it's actually even a little easier because all the sides of the triangle are 13 feet. So it's going to make our job a lot simpler. So here we have 13 feet as the base. And then we need to know what the height of that triangle. Now watch out because there is a height to this pyramid as well, but right now we don't need that height. We need the height of that base, which is 11.258. So we're gonna plug those numbers in. We're gonna multiply half times 13 for the base and 11.258 for the height. And we get 73.177 feet squared. Now we can use that area of the base to plug it in and we do one third times 73.177 for that area of the base. And then we need to multiply that times the height. Well, to find the height, we're now talking about the full pyramid. So I need to look what line goes from the very bottom base on that triangle all the way to the top point of the pyramid. And you can see that dark line that has an arrow pointing to it that says 11 feet. So we'll take that 11, and then we'll multiply that in with our one third and our 73.177. And we get approximately 268.316. And I say approximately because I rounded that to the nearest thousandth value. And again, we're going to include our measurement, which is feet, and we're going to include the cubed for volume. Now for our final example today, we have a sphere. Now the sphere, says volume equals four thirds pi times radius cubed. So we're going to plug all this information in. We have four thirds, which we keep the same. Pi, which we know is represented by 3.14. And again, that reminder will be on your formula sheet. And we're gonna multiply both of those things together with also the radius, which we see here is 11, right? Distance from the middle of the sphere or circle all the way out to the edge. Um, and we have 11 cubed. So when I put all of those things together and multiply them, again, you'll be able to plug these into a calculator. So it'll be nice and easy to make sure you get all the right information and to get it quickly. I'm going to get 5,572.453 centimeters squared. And again, that's an approximation. I have rounded it to the nearest thousandth value. When you have a problem on the test, it will tell you which value to round it to if you would need to do that. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope that you learned something new about the volume of 3D figures. Keep practicing, and don't forget to check out that formula sheet for either the HiSET or GED test. You can check out more of our videos and subscribe to our channel below. And you can also check out our Instagram and Facebook and our website at helmsacademy.org.